2024 has been an amazing year for 3D printers. They've been getting better and faster for the last couple years, but this year they've really started to get competitive on price. There's a lot of great machines at great prices out there right now. And now we're coming to the end of 2024, and I can talk about which printers I've actually kept around and which ones I'm really using on a day-to-day -day basis. Another important thing to cover here today is that not every 3D printer is best for every use case. So it's gonna be a mini long-term review of a bunch of 3D printers. What I like about them, who I would recommend them for, and which ones I would avoid. Then we're gonna cover some of these Black Friday sales so you know which printers to avoid and which ones I would recommend. This video is not sponsored by any of these companies so I can tell you which ones I actually like using. And since this isn't a sponsored video, I do have some affiliate links in the description down below. I do make some money off of you using those links down below at no additional cost to you, but those really help the channel keep growing and making these videos. And I will try to post some coupon codes with those links in the description down below. So to start off, I think a lot of people wanna know about Bamboo Lab printers. So let's go ahead and start with those. So I think we can just start with the printer I would recommend for most people and that's gonna be the Bamboo A1 Mini. They are one of the more robust ecosystems to buy into, which is kind of weird to say. A few years ago, they were the new company coming out, creating their own fairly closed ecosystem, and it seemed weird to recommend someone buy into a closed ecosystem of a company that doesn't have that trust behind it. But they've just continued to grow. They keep making new filaments that work really well on their ecosystem, they have good profiles, they print well, and the printer is only $200 here in the US. That is without the AMS Lite multi-spool changer over here. If you buy them in a combo together, the AMS Lite is only $150 extra dollars, but if you buy the AMS Lite separately later on, it'll be $200. So you could wait six months to a year to see if you really like this new hobby and then buy this nice feature, which is a great upgrade onto your A1 Mini. This printer is extremely easy to use. It's got a great touchscreen, Wi-Fi control, app support, it's really quiet, so if you are in a small apartment or somewhere where you need your printer to be in your main living space, a lot of printers I wouldn't recommend because of how loud they are. The A1 Mini is almost silent while it's printing, and when it's not printing, all the fans turn off and it really is silent. You can't hear that this machine is turned on. It's also a really nice looking machine. It's mostly this white and light gray, so if you do need to put it in any more visible part of your home, it still has some good aesthetics. A lot of printers are big black boxes. If the looks are a concern to you, I think the A1 and A1 Mini are the best looking printers. The A1 series of printers do have better print quality than the P1P series. So this is my P1P and it doesn't print as fast or as well as the A1 Mini. And this is a cheaper machine. So that's why I recommend this for most people. Downside here is this build volume. You are getting a small 180 millimeter in every dimension but there is a lot you can do with that and a lot of 3D prints can be sliced up. I just finished printing a new PC case. It fits a full ATX size motherboard and all of the parts could be printed on the A1 Mini. So just because you have a small printer doesn't mean you can't do large projects. It just takes a little bit more work because you have to assemble it after you've printed it. Next up, we can talk about the P1P and P1S. The P1P is just a non-enclosed version of the P1S. The P1P specifically is a weird one. I don't know who I would recommend this for. I think I would recommend most people, if you're gonna upgrade to the P1P, to go ahead and upgrade to the P1S and get it with an enclosure, unless you wanna get the P1P and then put your own enclosure on it. Since the A1 and A1 Mini have so many improvements over this machine as an open air PLA printer. So if you want an open air machine that's faster and better print quality, then just get an A1 and it has the same build volume as the P1P. If you're okay with a smaller build volume, get the A1 Mini. The next Bamboo Lab printer is the regular A1. This is another bed slinger type printer, so the bed moves back and forth, but it has the same build volume as their Core XY printers. So that's the same as the P1P, the P1S, and the X1 Carbon. This one similarly can be bought with or without this extra spool changer AMS light on the back. I do like the AMS light a lot, and I like that you can buy it separately. To buy it in the combo, you can get just the printer for 300, printer with the AMS light for 450. So the AMS light is an extra 150, but if you buy it separately, it'll be $200. So the A1 is really similar to the A1 Mini, so all of the things I said I liked about that one apply here. It's really easy to use, really easy to change the nozzles. This printer just pops off, so I often will change nozzles on this machine. This, is, this printer stays in this room where I do all my editing and voiceover because it's so quiet. 
This one, when it's not printing, it is silent. There's no fans that keep running in here. Most other printers do have a background fan where if it's on, that fan is running. And this one, even while printing is so quiet, I can record voiceover in the other side of the room and I don't pick it up in the microphone. If you're deciding between this and the P1P, the P1P I think is for people who do want to put it in an, in an enclosure. This one is for everyone else. This one is slightly faster, better qu print quality, so next up, we've got Creality printers, and I do have most of them right here. A lot of really good machines here. First up, we've got the K2 Plus. This thing is huge at 350 millimeters in every dimension. So massive build volume here, fully enclosed. It's got a chamber heater, so it can really handle those high temperature, large prints of ASA, ABS, no problem. It's got a full multi-spool changer on top. Currently, this is the only printer from Creality that has this support for what they call the CFS, but they say this will be backwards compatible with their other K1 printers. So the K1C is right here. This one is smaller, older version. The K1C is really nice and has a lot of nice upgrades over the regular K1. The K1 Max up here is a really is a larger version of the K1 printers. So if you need an enclosed large printer, the K1 Max is a really great option at a lot cheaper of a price point than the K2 Plus is. Next up, there are the bed slingers from Creality. They've got so many and a lot that you should avoid. The ones I have here are ones that are okay to get. So the Ender 3 V3 lineup is kind of confusing. The V3 SE is the cheapest one. It has no connectivity. There's not a touch screen, so it's got a scroll wheel. It does have auto Z offset, so it will fully do the manual bed leveling. There's no using a piece of paper to adjust the Z offset. There's no bed wheels to do the leveling manually at all. So that is really nice. It is very easy to use, but there are some downsides that it doesn't have the Wi-Fi connection. So sending files, you'll need to manually take it on a USB drive and transfer it from your computer over to the device. So the upgrade from that is the Ender 3 V3 KE. It has clipper based soft firmware on here, a better extruder, it does have a touch screen, and so you can send files directly from the app or from the software on a computer. If it's on the same Wi-Fi network, you can send it directly over here and you don't have to manually carry those files over. The next upgrade from there is the CR10 SE. Price-wise, I don't think I would go for this upgrade unless it was only slightly better. Linear, it has a linear rail on the Y-axis instead of the two linear rods on the Ender 3 V3 KE. The extruder is slightly different, but I don't know if it has any better performance here. The same touchscreen is used here, same connectivity. It does have a light bar on top, but price-wise, I don't think I would spend much more for those few upgrades. The next upgrade from there is back to the base Ender 3 V3. Naming scheme, it is weird, but this one is gray, which helps you remind you it's closer to the K1 series of printers than the Ender 3 series of printers. This is a Core XZ bed slinger version of the K1. It's got the same touch screen as it's on the K1 series, same hot end extruder from the K1 series, slightly more upgraded than the regular K1. It is really similar to the K1C. This one is kind of sitting at that in between. If you're upgrading from those to this, it might be worth it to upgrade a little bit more to get a fully enclosed printer that offers a lot of other nice features. Any of the older Ender 3s, unless you know what you're getting, I wouldn't buy any Ender 3 V2s or V1s. There's a lot of versions of things out there. If it doesn't have a V3 on there, it's gonna be difficult and hard to use. These are all very simple and easy to use because it does that automatic Z offset. The last brand I wanted to talk about was Elegoo. They make really large printers at really good price points. They're not the best printers, but if you're looking for a large build volume, they're gonna be the best ones to go for. Right here I've got, this is the Neptune 3 Max and it is huge at a really great price point. I haven't tried out their Neptune 4 line, but that adds clipper support, so more connectivity, a little bit faster printing. If the price point is close, I would recommend going for the Neptune 4 lineup. The Orange Storm Giga here is way bigger. Most people don't need a printer this large, and this one is not has not been the most reliable for me. The print quality is just really lacking and I think it might need a new extruder. I put a new extruder from them on here, but it's not printing well. I do think if I put a different extruder and hot end on here, it could be a great machine, but I just haven't gotten around to figuring all that out. And so currently it's a giant paperweight that I don't do much printing with. So if large build volume at a cheap price is your main concern, I would, op I would recommend looking at Elegoo. 
Another interesting category of printers are kit printers. This is a Voron V0, and it's a fully open source project. You can 3D print all the parts and then self-source or buy a kit. I will link some kits down in the description below, but this is one I can easily recommend as a great second printer. But you want a really fun project to dive into. Building your own 3D printer really isn't as hard as it sounds and is a great way to learn how these machines work. You'll learn Clipper, you'll learn how the motion system works, and adding on mods is one of the most fun parts here. With this one, I added a belted Z-axis, I added these lights on the side, I've changed out the extruder several times on this machine, and since you're printing your own parts, you get to choose which colors you want to use. So every kit printer out there looks different because it's so customizable. One of the unique printers I have around is a Lulzbot Taz Workhorse. This thing is an absolute beast of a 3D printer. It's so solidly built. With this slice engineering hot end on here, it can really push plastic. I have a large Gamma Master nozzle, so it prints these thick layers. It is still Marlin based with this scroll wheel LCD screen, manual SD card file transfer, so there's no Wi-Fi connectivity here. Lulzbot is one of the only 3D printer manufacturers based in the US, so if you absolutely need a US made 3D printer with US support, Lulzbot might be one of your only options. The next printer I have kept around is the Flashforge Adventurer 5M Pro. This is a cheap, fully enclosed Core XY 3D printer that has impressively good print quality. I do think it beats out most of the Creality machines when it comes to absolute print quality, and it does have some nice features. With two button presses, you can change out the nozzles. It's an entire little cartridge like this that slides all the way out. They do have a regular Adventurer 5M that just doesn't have this enclosure on it. So that can be a great way to save a little bit of money if you don't need an enclosure on your 3D printer. If multi-material interests you and you are looking at a Flashforge printer, they will be making a multi-material one in a few months. So maybe hold off on Flashforge for right now. Another category of printers to talk about is resin 3D printers. And there's a reason I haven't made a full video about these printers yet. It's because they're kind of difficult to work with and I haven't built a good workflow to really use these printers consistently. The difficulty is that this resin is toxic to your skin, so you have to wear gloves and it's really easy to make a big mess. The print quality though is incredible and something you can't match on FDM 3D printers. So it's not something I would recommend for most people, but if small and extreme detail is the one thing you want most of all, resin printers are definitely high quality. So that just about wraps it up. So I hope this video has helped give some context to all the printers I have around and actually use. It really is a great time to buy a printer because all of these printers I have are ones I would recommend. They all have slight differences that could make one perfect for your use case. Since most people don't need an enclosure on their 3D printer, the A1 Mini is really my highest recommendation for a really cheap price point. I do have dedicated reviews for most of these printers on my channel, so if you're interested in more of a long form review, go check that out. And I have so many YouTube shorts of using all these 3D printers, that's a great way to see the actual prints that I've made on these machines.